Today, £11 million has left Manchester United and gone straight into the back pockets of the Glazers. Over the last six years, over £120 million has left Manchester United on dividends repayments, as well as the interest repayments on the loan that they burdened on the club when they took over in 2005 on a leverage deal which should have been illegal. We all know that they are the snake. They are the head that we need to cut off. They are the people that we need to get rid of if we truly want our club back. And Gary Neville here speaking about early this week that the Glazers should not be taking an £11 million dividends this Friday. It's not right with the investment needed in the team. And he went on to say further this morning, he's saying that that's why dividends have got to stop for a period. No, they've just got to stop completely. And the Glazers, until we get rid of them, we will not have our club back. You will know full well that I am very, very vocal and have been very vocal against the Glazers for a long, long time. Scrolling back, looking through the videos that I've done. I don't know when I started them, but I've been doing them for years. You've been doing them for years. Uh, let's be honest, I'm not going to get invited to Manchester United anytime soon to have a nice conversation. Because they're fucking leeches. And if you take a look here. This is the, the, the dividends chart from 2015. 20 million, 23, 22, 23, 23. 12 in 2021. And that delayed 11 million has been added on to this year's. Totaling 33 million pounds. And this is what makes it even more. Not like you needed another reason for it to be infuriating. But this makes it even more infuriating. The fact that all this is happening when Manchester United are operating at a loss. Dividends typically are taken out of a business when a company has made profits and the owners of said business will take a slice of that profit. That's what dividends typically are. Right now at Manchester United, and it has been for the last couple of years, we've been at operating at a loss and the Glazers have still paid themselves. Where's that money coming from then? Because it's not coming from profits. It's coming directly out of the club directly out of the club's cash reserves. And if you scroll back, I don't know about it. I'll be honest, these, these are a bit unexplained. If we go back and look at the 2012 profit and loss accounts, and this has been posted by Swiss Ramble this morning. These are the official ones down here for Manchester United PLC in 2012. What's that? That's a 10 million euros, not million euros, 10 million pounds dividend. What is that? Where did that come from? Kieran Maguire made me aware of this this morning and this is very unexplained back in 2010 when it was the bonds being released that was when manchester united's owners the glazers tried to refinance the debt xyz what's this down here equity dividends paid to shareholders in the sum of 266 million pounds what the hell is that i need to do some research into that but that is why i will always continue to support everything that the 1958 does in encouraging the protests, whether it be the protests against Norwich or Chelsea, or was it Brentford at Old Trafford last season? And I guarantee you there will be a protest against Brighton. Eric Ten Hag's first game in charge will be preceded by a protest against the Glazers. I'd be very surprised if that didn't happen. And the way that everything that has been run at Manchester United for a long, long time, we've just been fed lies, deceit, and they've still been taking dividends despite the fact that Manchester United as a football club is operating at a loss. Where are these dividends coming from? Where are they being taken from? They're being taken out of the club. And look, Mustard here this morning saying, look, we're advocating and pursuing a strategy of engagement with the club and its owners, but shit me, what have we had? We've had nothing. All they've done is lie to us. Where's this fan share scheme that we were promised before the start of last season, wasn't it? Where is it? Where is this fan share scheme? Where is this open line of communication that we were promised? Absolutely nothing. And the Glazers, for fuck's sake, it goes to show how little they care about public perception. Because they could have, if they were smart, even, even if they had just, uh, no, not that, if, even if they, if they gave one shit about what people thought about them, they wouldn't have taken those payments today. They would have delayed those dividends payments. But they really, really, really do not care. At the height of the frustration, I still think this is the eye of the storm in this transfer window. I, th I think we'll make signings. I think by the end of it, I think we'll be happy, hopefully, with how this window goes. But at the height of the frustration, they still take those dividends. It goes to show you how little they care about public perception. How 
they don't care if they are vilified as the evil villains that they are. As long as they get their money. And that is the fundamental problem. The fundamental straitjacket. Crippling Manchester United. And I'll tell you another thing that's really crippled us has been how we've actually spent money. Look at that. Um, Manchester United's player sales profit from 2014 to 21 was only 100 million compared to City's 228, Liverpool's 370 and Chelsea's 568 million. It's not just a case of Manchester United getting dividends taken out of the club. Jeez, Dan James has been one of the, I think we made more profit on Dan James than most. We've ever, I think he was like the sixth most expensive sale we've ever done. We've wasted money. We've burned through money. And that's why now Manchester United are sitting here at the same time as the dividends are taking, being taken out of the club, at the same time as Old Trafford is dilapidated, at the same time that we needed a new training ground, at the same time that we haven't completed any transfers, at the same time as our club is operating at a loss and has been sustained for two years. And I don't know what the third, what the latest set of accounts is. I, I don't think they've been released, been released just yet. Of course, they haven't. We're in 2022. Where you can predict that probably a loss will happen again. They will still take their dividends and they do not give a shit about this club we've had protests when we went onto the pitch and we stopped the biggest game in english football we have protests outside and that was obviously this is the same protest there but we had protests for the brentford game and the chelsea game and the, i think the norwich game as well and we've had banners inside we, we've we've done everything so far to date and the sustained new approach by the 1958 i believe is something that will cause a bit i think it's going to I think it's going to help. I don't know whether we're any closer to the Glazers leaving Manchester United. I really, really don't. But honestly, until they leave Manchester United, we can't truly rebuild as a football club. And it should be the focus of everything. Signing De Jong doesn't change that. Signing Anthony or Martinez, signing all three of them at the same time does not change that. Does not change the fact that the Glazers are the people holding Manchester United back. At the same time as the rise of the oil-rich super clubs has happened, we've had the Glazers as our owners. And that their reluctance and their, their, their inward looking has allowed all these other clubs to take over. And Manchester United now to be looking, standing and just looking up and thinking, my God, that gap is fucking huge. And that will not change until the Glazers are not our owners. And to uh, look, Gary Neville here saying that the dividends have to stop for a period. I don't think that's right at all, Gary. They've just got to stop. There are no other Premier League owners who take dividends out of their clubs. Even the likes of City, or who are all in huge profits. And they could take dividends out of the clubs. They do not take dividends out of the clubs. It sets a tone. It sets everything that is wrong. And why Manchester United is in the position it is in. And it's infuriating to see. As I said, they, haven't even, they, don't even, they care so little that they didn't even delay the payments. And they released this news at the height of the frustration. It's pure glazers. It's pure greed. It's crippled our club. And until they leave, we will not rebuild truly. If Ten Hag is successful, it is in spite of our owners, not because of our owners. And it'll be even more impressive if he manages to achieve it with them at the helm. But we, we need to keep doing what we're doing with the protests. Everything you can do, whether it's boycotting online, whether it's sending, do what, you're, what you can. Every little helps. Every little thing can contribute towards it. That's why I will continue to do these videos and I won't stop. And I'm going to end on this video here. Something I produced after one of the protests earlier this seat. Uh, sorry, at the end of last season. Keep fighting. We want our club back. And until the Glazers leave, we cannot get our club back. The Glazers have no place in Manchester anymore. This group called the 1958 have organised this presentation, you know, this uh, protest at the club's ownership. Uh, probably seven or eight thousand United fans marched through with flares, with banners, chanting, we want our club back. I, I tried to speak to one or two, but the, the level of, of hostility among those fans it was pretty steep. And then the gist is from the club, they, they say that their club is now rotten from the, the top down, pretty bare, and that has led to fans to say they want to change, that the club is stagnant, is being allowed to drift and that they would like change so very shortly the game will kick off here in Old Trafford and a great majority I think
number of those United fans will remain outside of all traffic and safety until the 17th. here uh, they won't be going straight into the game against Norwich City for a three o'clock kickoff they're going to wait till 317 that's uh, 17 minutes past kickoff one minute for every year the Glazer family have been in charge taken by directors with a 1.1 billion he said you know your United fans up you know the United fans traveling their houses spending money they have in cost so all that goes into the mix so it's certainly not quick fix and um, I think United fans aren't finished with this